Greetings, Rob Harrell again from Western Michigan. I'm sitting in my daughter's office area in her house in Western Michigan. And I wanted to say something about one of the more well-known passages in the New Testament, a saying of Jesus, where he says, Come unto me. You remember that one? He says that in Matthew 11, 28 and following. Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in spirit and heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He's talking about his way of living. When we take Jesus Christ into our hearts, how that is so amazingly different from that of any kind of religious uh, legalistic approach. Back then the people were being bombarded by false teaching and a slew of additional uh, requirements from their traditions and laws, the religious clerics, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Sanhedrin, they were loading on the people all kinds of expectations which were unrealistic, which they weren't even practicing themselves. And it was just weighing the people down, you know, not unlike how we are today with so many religious teachings. And we are bombarded again with uh, the notions that we have to do this and do that and do this and do that and not do this and not do that. That is not to say again that we do not have certain expectations from God and that the Bible doesn't make certain demands from us. It does. But there is a freedom, you see. There is a lightness in the way of Christ. One thing I wanted to say about that, too, I, it, it's interesting where he says in the middle of that, learn from me. Learn from me. He's talking again about his different way of life. It's altogether different. Learn from me. We cannot learn if we're unwilling to learn. We cannot listen unless our ears are open. First we learn and then we teach. First we hear, and then we speak. There are too many people in professional ministry who speak without first listening. And it's important, you know, as we listen to people in the Christian realm, it's important to listen to people who really do seem to know what they're talking about. And we have a hard time discerning that sometimes. We're impressed with credentials. We're impressed with positions and uh, influence. Somebody has a great following, and so we're impressed with that. That is not the key, necessarily. The key is that they are someone who really does know God, who really has been down the road for some time in terms of personal experience and even trial and who has spent time in the Word of God. It's important that we listen to someone who has character. Not somebody that's perfect, there is no perfect person, but someone who has character. The qualifications when we look at the pastorals, those are the books in the New Testament, First and Second Timothy and Titus. When we look at those, because Paul is addressing pastoral concerns and ministerial concerns, talking to young pastors. He says in terms of requirements in both Timothy and Titus that there should be character qualifications. And one of those qualifications is that the pastor be not a new convert, as he says, lest he become puffed up and fall into the temptation of the devil, the condemnation of the evil one. A young man should not most likely, most often, immediately step into a pulpit and begin to expound the scriptures. First, he has to learn. I realize there are all kinds of exceptions. I started preaching when I was young, 
but here is the normative position here that he be one who again first learns when he learns he can teach and as you learn you can teach now that is not to say again you have to have a degree that you have to again know everything about the Bible when you speak to other people but what I'm saying here is first let's listen to what the Spirit has to say and as we look at the scriptures and try to understand the scriptures and sometimes confer with other people again who have studied the scriptures perhaps good annotations but we have to be careful with those even in the Bible and different notes that are in different Bibles they have their particular position in slant we have to again first listen to what the Spirit says he who has ears to hear says Jesus let him hear and once we hear then we have a word right then we have something to say I have to be willing to learn this is part of the Christian life a disciple again is one who is learning and following Jesus we take his yoke upon us what is a yoke it's not an egg yoke and that confuses us because that's the only way we really speak of yokes a yoke was a harness an animal harness that went on oxen oftentimes he says don't put the yoke of religion on you of the um, legalistic systems of the uh, positions and belief systems of those who don't even really practice what they preach and with 2,000 years of church history there is an endless amount an endless array of religious teaching and notions and much of it has nothing to do with the actual scriptures themselves all kinds of ideas and traditions and practices we have to put these in perspective Jesus says don't be burdened down with that but put my yoke my way of life well what is the way of life in terms of what Jesus is actually teaching well go to the New Testament go to Matthew Mark Luke and John read it read what he's saying and then read also elsewhere in the scriptures which comment on that and give us additional information let the Bible be the primary source come at it as objectively as you can and again ask God to speak to you and give you clarity of thought and understanding and that's why again it's good to be involved with a church in the good solid uh, ministry team if you will a pastor who really does again study and know his Bible and uh, to listen to people who have a high regard for the scriptures so continue to learn don't be discouraged with it you might be frustrated you may, might be at a place of transition in your life not sure where to go what to do who to listen to who to believe pray and ask God to show you and he will lead and guide you in all these things and this is Sunday so have a good Lord's Day today God bless you